From Chesapeake, Virginia, WHKT presents Sports Scene. Sports Scene features local, regional, and nationally acclaimed guests and excellent interviews. Follow Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Now here is Greg Bickaveras. All right, thank you very much, Joe Daniel. We are live as always. Brand new month, November 1st, 2017th. Thank you very much for listening to Sports Scene right here, an interview show each Wednesday from 12 to 1. Also watch sports highlights on NNPSTV.com, a TV interview program I've hosted since February of 92. I want to start the show off with a few things. First of all, maybe the memory be eternal for the people that lost their lives in that barbaric uh, accident in New York yesterday. Totally uncalled for. We all have to be vigilant and keep them in your thoughts and prayers for that terrorist act. Also, we lost a fellow broadcaster recently, Tim Parsons, a good friend of the program, good friend of mine, of course, the uh, brother Brian Parsons, who works for Wavy TV 10, Fox 43. Tim was a wonderful soul. We did games together on WLQM during the 0102 basketball season. Really great broadcaster, was in the car business as well. May his memory be eternal. Tell your friends about GJBTV.com, Twitter, at Greg Bick. And you can see the rest of my Twitter handles on GJBTV.com in the contact section. Thank you to our military. Guest lineup presented by Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville. Sponsors on GJBTV.com, Marketplace Sponsors, and Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Phone line presented by Mi Casita Mexican Restaurant with two locations in Virginia Beach. Show presented by HRSMHOF.com. Hampton Roads Sports Media Hall of Fame will make the big announcement November the 9th. Redskins Seattle this week as the Redskins try to rebound from that bad loss against the Cowboys. Old Dominion still trying to get a win. Exciting World Series Game 7 tonight. Flacco hit against the Dolphins last week. Still the worst hit I've seen in a very long time. Great interviews, business segments, highlights, commentary, what teased me off. Thank you for making the habit to listen to Sports Scene Weekly, and we love our regulars and newcomers. Stay tuned for Sports Scene Live on 1650 AM, 92.5 FM, TuneIn.com. Type in WHKT to listen on your phone or computer. Stay tuned. Catch up on archived editions of Sports Scene by going to GJBTV.com and clicking the YouTube image on the homepage. Now back to Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. And welcome back to Sports Scene right here on 1650 AM, 92.5 FM. TuneIn.com. Greg Picaveras, glad you're with us. World Series Game 7 tonight on Fox. Exciting, exciting. Let's welcome our feature guest today. He's been part of the Mets broadcast. You've seen him on ESPN. Also does NFL games on the radio. Wayne Rendazzo. How are you, my friend? I'm great. How are you? Very good. Very good. Happy uh, Wednesday to you. And let's uh, start the things off. Give us a bio blast. I've seen you do games on ESPN. I've heard your NFL games. Give us an up to date. What you're doing today? Yeah, doing a uh, doing a bunch. You know, of course, uh, work with the Mets on on radio and filling on some TV as well. And uh, you know, call uh, college football in the NFL for Sports USA on on national radio, and also do a bunch of college basketball. Uh, mostly for the Big Ten Network and and for Fox these days, but still uh, still do some ESPN as well. Right. Uh, what are your thoughts? I met you during the summer. Let's start with your team, the Mets first. Uh, new manager Collins was like one of the longest tenured managers in Mets history. He was the longest in Mets history, as a matter of fact. Yeah. The second most wins the Mets a uh, Mets manager ever had, only behind Davey Johnson, of course, oversaw those great teams in the late eighties. And Terry uh, had a had a nice run there, and for him, it was uh, you know it was an opportunity to get back into managing in the big leagues. It had been over a decade since he had last done it. By the time he was hired with the Mets, so uh, it was a good opportunity to to kind of change the course of his legacy in Major League Baseball. And he did that. You know, he won a National League pennant with the Mets. He got to the playoffs a couple of times. Really, the first times he had ever been to the postseason as a Major League manager. So. It was a great opportunity for him, and and now you know that that time has ended. Uh, you know, certainly a, a tough 2017 for everybody, 
and uh, you know, just a new voice kind of needed in the room. And Mickey Calloway will represent that voice, a guy that really won over the Mets immediately with his interview. The Mets had planned to have a couple of rounds of interviews and canceled the second round after they met with Mickey. He was the guy, and they went with him right away. So uh, they found a good fit for them, a guy with a great pitching background, which, of course, this team is still going to be built on the back of its young pitching staff. So they hope that Mickey Calloway can get the best out of these guys and and move on toward 2018 feeling a lot better about how things are going well we have one player from this area as you well know from the virginia beach area david wright what is his status yeah i mean that's still a great unknown and 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 i think the mets are operating under the pretenses that you know there's not much there with david wright that at this point you know anything he gives them is a bonus and that they're going to have to make plans to just be without him again. You know, he's only played 75 games total in the last three seasons. He didn't play any in 2017. You know, he's, he's aging without even being on the field. And, of course, these, these back and neck problems are, are not something that are, are easy to overcome, especially with regard to his spinal stenosis. He had a shoulder surgery, so... There's been a lot there for David. You know, the, his presence has been missed. Uh, they would love for him to be back in some capacity. But the way that things have gone, you know, they can't really wait for him. They can't really say, well, he's the third baseman. They have to go on and, and make moves as though he's not going to be. Talking to Wayne Randazzo right here. He's part of the Mets uh, broadcast. Greg Bickaveras, glad you're with us live on Sports Scene at 1213. Don't forget the show will be archived later at GJB. TV.com by hitting the YouTube link. Before we talk about the World Series, so dramatic, and you've been tweeting about it as well, how was New York the day after this barbaric act yesterday? I'm in Chicago, actually, right now, so I don't know. I, I'm sure that uh, you know New Yorkers are as, as tough and uh, resilient as anybody. I'm sure they're going to face it with defiance and uh, with resiliency and, and, you know, like they have with everything else that's happened in New York City. So, uh, you know, it's a it's a city that's not easily rattled, and I'm, I'm sure you know the marathon's going to go on this weekend, that, and everything will continue on as planned. Uh, you know, you'd have to do uh, really a, a lot worse than that to to get the attention of New Yorkers or to, or to really rattle them. And uh, you know, certainly our condolences to people that were affected by this. Uh, but I think as a, a as city as a whole, you know, they're going to march forward here. Very good, of course. Wayne was talking about the Mets, and really the Mets have not been that bad. This year was was a dip at 70 and 92, but you look at last year, 87, 75, and they went to the World Series in uh, 2015. So this has not been all doom and gloom, considering there's been a lot of injuries to this team the last three years, like a lot of teams. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the injuries have piled up the last two years, especially. You know, 2015, they were pretty healthy. For the most part, they didn't really have Zach Wheeler, but otherwise they had everybody else. You know, the thing about these five pitchers, you know, and by that I mean Syndergaard, DeGrom, Harvey, Mats, and Wheeler, they've never been in the rotation together, ever. They've never done it. They've never had one turn through the rotation with all five of them. And, you know, that's kind of unbelievable to over the last three seasons that it's never happened, but it really hasn't. There have been so many different injuries to so many of them that they've never been to get just even one turn through the rotation. So it's something the Mets hope that 2018 is that year, but not only have them pitch, have them pitch effectively. And I think that we saw Matt Harvey pitch last year, but not effectively. Same thing for Steven Matz. They believe at least with Matz they have an answer. You know, he had the same surgery to repair that ulnar nerve that Jacob DeGrom had the previous year. So they're hoping that Matz can bounce back as DeGrom did last season so it's uh, at least for him they know where he's going uh they fully believe Sundergaard will make a, a recovery he looked great in the last week or two of the season that he, he came back for and you know they hope that matt harvey can get back to at least close to what he used to be right talking to wayne rendazzo part of the mets broadcast and does football of course basketball for several national tv networks glad you're with us on this beautiful november first and really i mean fox has got to love this world series game seven of course they had a great game of course uh, with ohio state and penn state redskins cowboys and now a game seven in the world series with a 
the um, number two market in the country in L.A., and the Dodgers have been there, but it's been a long time. What are your thoughts about tonight? And you're saying, really, pitchers being used right and left. you got to wonder how many arms are left and how healthy are these arms going into relief tonight. Yeah, you know, it was interesting to watch Game 7 of last year's World Series because, you know, there was so much on the line between the Cubs and Indians and uh, the two teams that hadn't won long in the longest period of time and how their pitchers looked. If you remember, Corey Kluber was the starter for Cleveland, and it was his third start of that series, and he didn't look very good. Andrew Miller struggled in Game 7 of last year's World Series after looking untouchable throughout the entire postseason. Same for Aroldis Chapman, who gave up that dramatic homer to Rajay Davis. So it was a war of attrition in that particular Game 7. The Cubs outlasted Cleveland, and they won in 10 innings. But it was uh, really a, not a pitcher's duel at all. It was a, a battle of just trying to get through that game with whatever pitchers you had. The Cubs used John Lester out of the bullpen. I believe Cleveland went to Trevor Bauer at one point. So it was uh, it was quite a crazy game, and I think tonight we'll see a lot of that. You know, with regard to the Dodgers, you know, Darvish is going to start, but we know Kershaw is going to pitch at some point. We know that Kenley Jansen is going to pitch. Uh, they've got Alex Wood available, so uh, I think we'll see a lot of those guys for the Dodgers, and probably very few relievers in this game. If I'm the Astros, I don't even think about the bullpen. I think about just kind of rummaging through. My starting rotation, to be honest with you, I think that, you know, after McCullers, who is going to start, you know, you have Charlie Morton, then you have Dallas Keuchel, you know, Brad Peacock's been out of the bullpen in the playoffs, but really he's a starter, and, you know, I wouldn't mind going back to Verlander for an inning. Remember Randy Johnson did that in 2001 for Arizona, where he started Game 6 and came out of the bullpen for Game 7. I wouldn't be surprised to see Verlander do that tonight, so really, if I'm A.J. Hinch, I just go through my starting five, and I don't even think about the bullpen. Mm -hmm. This baseball season has been so exciting. Football has almost Mm -hmm. taken a back seat, the NFL especially. What are your thoughts, um, being based pretty much out of the tri-state area for a good part of the year, on the Jets and Giants so far? Of course, the Giants have off to a a pretty bad start. It looks like it's going to be very difficult to even sniff a wild card at this point. It's kind kind of a shame because they're not a bad team. It just hasn't all come together. Uh, just like the 49ers, they're they're kind of they're bad, but they're not losing. They're not getting killed by teams, or the Browns for that matter. Uh, that's one thing. And then all this uh, drama with the kneeling and player protests, and the owners putting their foot in their mouth, like in Houston. This has been kind of a dramatic uh, start to the season, unlike we've seen in years past. Yeah, I mean, there's you know, I think there's always storylines in the NFL. And sure. There's always interest. There's always uh, you know something different. Uh, always teams that are surprising in, in one way or the other, whether that's because they're better than expected or worse. In the case of the Giants, they're worse. And, you know, Ben McAdoo has come up under some fire. Um, you know, I, yeah, I think for a long time, you know, Tom Coughlin wasn't necessarily the most uh, well-loved New York football coach. He wasn't Parcells. You know, he wasn't anybody of that nature. But he did win two Super Bowls, and I think teams – fallen into this trap sometimes of replacing their head coach or replacing their manager when you know things are pretty good and the next guy who comes in isn't as good and doesn't have the same kind of chemistry and and doesn't have the same success and then you you wonder why it was such a rush to replace that head coach or manager in the first place you know maybe the Yankees will deal with some of that moving forward as they've let go of Joe Girardi for whatever reason so it's uh, it's an interesting dynamic there for the Giants and, and something they're trying to get through. And, you know, around the NFL, I think that they're, you know, Philadelphia's been an incredible surprise starting the year the way that they have. The Chiefs look really good outside of a couple of hiccups. They, they look like a team that could be uh, very difficult to beat come January. And uh, I think that as the league develops here about halfway through the season, it's, uh, you know, it's going to get more and more interesting as teams start to vie for playoff spots. 
That's a great point what you brought up about McAdoo because, look, he did make the playoffs last year. And, you know, the, the tenure of managers, even Joe Torre managed the Mets way back in the day. He was a long-time manager for the Yankees, but you look at uh, Girardi, he had a long tenure. Uh, Collins, like you just mentioned, the longest ever for the Mets. The Nationals can't keep a manager more than a couple years. Here is Dusty Baker, the former great Dodgers star who's managed several teams, gets the boot because he made some bad decisions for the most part in the postseason. The thing about Dusty is he had respect from the clubhouse. There's no guarantee this new manager from the Cubs is going to help that at all. I mean, you don't know what chemistry is going to be like, and it seems like some players play better for managers, some others don't, but, you know, there's no guarantee when you change managers, especially managers that win like Dusty Baker. Yeah, you know, I don't, you know, I think Dusty had respect from some of the players. I don't know if he had respect from all of them. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't know that that whole group bought in to what Dusty was saying. I think there was some resentment early in the season when Dusty leaned on the offense a lot. Uh, really out of necessity because the pitchers weren't getting it done, especially out of the bullpen for Washington. But yeah, it was it was it was still to me a strange thing. You know, I don't think Dusty managed all that poorly in the National League Division Series. Um, you know, there was you know maybe you can question when he took Scherzer out of Game Three. Uh, you know, I think he did the right thing with Scherzer in in Game Five. It just didn't work out uh, in the Nationals' favor. Scherzer just didn't have it that night. So you know, I don't I don't think there were too many instances where Baker. Had had blown it in the playoffs, but I think that it, you know that's that's just a an organization right now that's that's trying to find the right fit, and you know maybe maybe it is Davy Martinez. You know maybe at this point uh, they need a, a younger guy in the room, a guy who's who's you know really paid his dues and is is looking for uh, that first managerial gig. And, you know Davy has been close a lot when it comes to being a, a major league manager, and, and now he gets really falls into a great spot. Uh, he gets a team that's that's playoff ready, and you know Washington has to look at 2018 as potentially the last year with this group. You know Harper is a free agent after 18, Murphy's a free agent after 18. You know they're getting older. Scherzer and Zimmerman are getting older. Um, you know it's just you never know what will look it'll look like past 2018. But you know what you got going into it, and you know you've got Harper for at least one more year. And maybe just one more year, so it's it's really a win now situation for Washington, and it'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds for them with a new manager in this type of scenario. Yeah, because we're seeing that early on too as well. I mean, coaches, managers are always under the gun. You need good ownership, general managers, coaches, players. Then you need chemistry, and then you need luck, staying away from the injuries, especially in baseball when there's. There's a long, you know, preseason, and then of course 162 games and a long postseason. You're, everybody's tested more so in baseball than any other sport, just because of the endurance factor too. But um, it's always it's always going to be intriguing on how you know the teams mesh with the managers like the Mets or the Yankees. There's no guarantees. I mean, that's the thing. You go into the off season hoping and thinking it'll sustain from last year, but as you well know, Wayne, calling a lot of different sports, that's no guarantee either. Well, I think baseball especially is is changing with regard to the role of a major league manager. I think that, you know, it used to be they set the tone for the whole organization. It was the way that they were was really how it all trickled down throughout the, even the minor league systems. You, you wanted to find that consistency that really fit in with the manager's philosophy. That's not the case anymore. In fact, the manager is really it has become like middle management in a lot of ways where he's the communicator he's a, a spokesperson almost like a, a press secretary like we see in the white house like you know sarah sanders right now that's almost what a major league manager has become they're the ones that are on the front line you know talking to the press every day talking to the media before and after every game communicating with the players, developing those relationships, making those moves on the field. But with reality, it's all coming from the front office. These guys, the general managers, the executives, they are running the team almost exclusively now with regard to even in-game moves. These things are, are thought about beforehand, and there are a lot of scenarios that are distributed to the manager well before the game even starts. So in a lot of ways, the manager's decisions are really the front office's decisions, certainly with regard to to player movement and player personnel. But even in-game, I think we're seeing more and more that 
that managers have very little decision making to actually do these days and really how they how they connect with the players is maybe the most important job they have outside of how they connect with the media and you know i think the game has changed dramatically in that way where we're seeing front offices involved much more on the day-to-day game-to-game than we ever have you're exactly right final few moments with rain to Wayne Rendazzo from the Mets broadcast team and a lot of several different networks. Greg Bicavaris, glad you're with us. We'll get to Wayne's Twitter handle in just a moment. And you're exactly right. The analytics in all sports you see in football during timeouts, they're, they're looking at video and iPads and you know and technical devices like that as opposed to paper and printouts anymore. In baseball now, it's more and more about a younger manager's game, it seems like, in analytics. But analytics could be true in any sport, Wayne, for that matter. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing it. You're seeing it continue to rise in in the NFL and the NBA. Uh, you know, I think the NBA has been very forward about how they've they've changed with regard to analytics. You know, I still think the NFL head coach has a lot of power, you know, making plays and 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 making the playbook and running the offenses and defenses. So, I think the NFL is is you know behind in, as far as those types of changes go, which is you know just kind of sports specific in that way but yeah i think that the, the the sports are changing and you know in baseball's case i think it's it's i think it's changing for the better i think that there's more efficiency with regard to scoring runs you know, we heard it on the broadcast last night in the sixth inning when the dodgers were down one nothing you know john smoltz you know he can talk a lot of the new 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 age things he knows what's going on but he still has an old school mentality and when Chris Taylor was up with two on and nobody out in the sixth inning last night, Smoltz was was very much encouraging that Taylor bunt in that situation. And 10 or 15 or 30 years ago, Taylor would have bunted in that situation. And if he'd have gotten it down, it would have been second and third with one out. Well, the next two guys made outs, including a foul out, that wouldn't have scored a run. So in that scenario... Yeah, you would have bunted a long time ago, but nowadays you absolutely should not. You never should have to begin with, but really you shouldn't now, especially with a guy like Chris Taylor who has power in the leadoff spot. Taylor comes through with the base hit. The Dodgers take the lead in that inning, and I think that you know, 30 years ago that's not what would have happened. Maybe they tie it, but they would not have taken the lead. And you, know, you heard John Smoltz pressing the bunt in that spot, and it just wouldn't have been the right thing to do. Wayne, in about 30 seconds, I know you can do it. Give us your Twitter handle, social media, and when is your next broadcast? People can see you or hear you. Yeah, I'm on Twitter at Wayne Randazzo. Um, just my name, my last name, R-A-N-D-A-Z-Z-O. And uh, I've got uh, football this Sunday on the radio. I've got the Atlanta Falcons against the Carolina Panthers. Looking forward to that. And for people in your area, I'm actually calling the first uh, Georgetown game next Sunday. Uh, for Georgetown's opening game of the season against Jacksonville University on uh, on Fox. So looking forward to that. Will that be Fox Sports 1 or which Fox Network? Yeah, Fox Sports Net, I think. I'm, I'm not even 100% sure which network is airing that, but it'll be on uh, it'll be on the FSN somewhere. Very good, Wayne. All the best. Hope to get you on again soon. It was a pleasure talking to you and safe travels. All right, thanks a lot, Greg. Thank you. My pleasure. Wayne Randez are right there. One of the Mets broadcasters, also part of um, NFL broadcasting and college basketball as well. And, of course, a reminder, a little Tokyo buffet is open in Hampton, 49 West Mercury Boulevard. Uh, give them a call at 325-8286. Hibachi, noodle soup, sushi bar, and buffet bar. Great hot food open for lunch and dinner seven days a week in Hampton. Little Tokyo buffet. Stay tuned for the news or more sports scene live after these messages and the news break. Interact with Sports Scene on Twitter at Greg Bick. Email B-I-C-O-G-B at Hotmail.com. Now back to Greg Bickavaris in the Hampton Roads Online Mall.com studios. It's now time for Greg's Highlights, presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. And I want to thank Wayne Rondazzo from the Mets broadcast, talking about the World Series, his broadcast career as well. Really good guest here on Joe Daniel. Really good way to start off the show today. Very informative about broadcasting. Yes, he was very good, and he sounded very good, too. That was a great phone line. It's always good for the producer when they are on a good phone line. Yes, 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 my friend. All right, highlights right here. Don't forget uh, GJBTV.com. Click the YouTube link for archive shows. And, of course, um, 
Save the Date each Wednesday from 12 to 1 for Sports Scene. Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. Browse, shop, visit, bookmark it, folks. Three websites you want to bookmark GJBTV.com, Hampton Roads Online Mall.com, and HRSMHOF.com. Of course, the Cavs struggling early in the NBA season, kind of surprising there. VHSL football playoffs coming up soon. And, of course, uh, folks, it's now a good time, father time, to get your colon checked, prostate checked, and, of course, uh, for females as well, get all your vital organs checked as well. Health you can never take for granted. Absolutely, yeah. And that there's a lot of campaigns, I know, especially for the males, like what you were talking about, called um, Movember. And it's a movement where men all over the country, probably the world, are not shaving their mustaches for the month of November in order to raise awareness for men's health specifically, like what you were talking about, prostate cancer, uh, testicular cancer. Um, I mean, it's you're never too early to check. Always be vigilant, as you said earlier in the show. Make sure that you're staying observant and checking your body to make sure that you are in um, good health and also sharing the word and spreading the word, hey, I know it's kind of a sensitive topic, but it could save your life. Right. Of course, we mentioned at the beginning of the show, Hampton Roads lost a wonderful broadcaster in uh, Tim Parsons. May his memory be eternal. All right. Question presented by Buffalo Wild Wings and Newport News to Joe Daniel. Do you and the family, at least speak for yourself, shop at the same grocery store each time? Not each time. We do have some groceries that are delivered to the house, and so that's pretty consistent. Um, but as far as like for um, regular groceries, when we're actually going grocery shopping, yes, we go to the same place. We love the Walmart pickup. We think it's great shopping online, going and picking up your groceries as soon as they're ready. We love that, so that's pretty consistent. But as far as any incidentals go, like if, you, if we forget um, a dressing or a spice or something, then it really doesn't matter. Whatever grocery store we happen to be closest to in the moment, we'll go to that grocery store. So we do like to stay pretty consistent, but for the most part, we're not strict on it. Absolutely. Of course, Buffalo Wild Wings and Newport News, lunch, dinner, appetizers, mozzarella sticks, salads, boneless traditional wings, yum, 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 burgers, wraps, sandwiches, tenders, max, beverages, desserts, a great kids menu, games on TV, wings, beer, sports right there next to Patrick Henry Mall at Newport News. Give them a call at 249-3999. Go by and see the great staff over there at Buffalo Wild Wings and Newport News, wings, beer, sports, seven days a week. Watch the Game 7 of the World Series there tonight, NFL and college football, all weekend long, starting tomorrow with the NFL. Stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages. We've never lowered the bar so low that we're just like, I just want to get up in the morning and just be okay. We've never done that. That's not why we went to the moon. That's not why we crossed mountains. That's not why we found oil. We changed the world. Truth justice and dare i say it the american way this is the glenn beck program glenn beck weekday afternoons from three to six on the answer am 1650 Hi, this is Wynn over at the Hearst Shelter. Christmas is a really special season, and we would like it to be special for the families that are in our shelters. If you or an organization would like to adopt a family for an Adopt-A-Family program, please give us a call at 757-485-1445, and we can connect you. If you would like to volunteer, we would love to have you do that as well, perhaps providing dinner or wrapping gifts. I'd love to speak with you about getting involved during the Christmas season. Give us a call at 757-485-1445. Thank you so much. I want to be a teacher, a doctor, a scientist, a missionary, an astronaut, president of the United States. So I am learning how to read at Gateway Christian Academy, how to count, how to learn, about history, about the Bible, about this wonderful world. You can learn at Gateway Christian Academy too. It's your child's gateway to endless possibilities. Call 499-6551 or on the web, gatewaycrusaders.com. Our Shop with Praise bookstore has a lot of great gifts for you, such as a collection of daily devotionals that will uplift and inspire you at any point during your busy day. These are nice hardbound books by such authors as Matthew West, David Jeremiah, Johnny Erickson, Tata, James Dobson, many more. None are over $5. Our bookstore has a lot of great items for you. Come and check us out. We're open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call our studios at 488-1010 for all the info and come and shop with praise. You are listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bicavaris. Now, back to Greg. All aboard! <laughs> I, 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 I. 
All right, back live right here on Sports Scene on 1650 AM at 1239. Greg Picadaris, glad you're with us. Don't forget, tunein.com. Type in WHKT to listen to your phone or your computer. We archive every show 24-7. GJBTV.com. Hit the YouTube link for archive shows of Sports Scene. Tell your friends. We'd like to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the world listening to today's broadcast in 175 countries on TuneIn.com. Thanks for all that you do, and we hope you're enjoying today's version of Sports Scene. Also, our good friends Jamie over at the Craft Burger Bar at 1706 Mediterranean Avenue in Virginia Beach. He's got great appetizers, craft chili, fried house pickles, great adult beverages like wine and craft beer, adult beverages like we mentioned, Wagyu burgers, the Coronado, the Greek, the pepper, the shroom, the sunrise, excellent toppings, chicken sandwiches, Carolina snap dogs, salads, vegan burgers, house cut fries, beer battered onion rings, great atmosphere, kick back with your friends right there over at Jamie's Place at Craft Burger Bar, the talk of Virginia Beach right now, folks, 1706 Mediterranean Avenue, go by there near the oceanfront and get away from Daily Grind, open for lunch and dinner over at the Craft Burger Bar. Fun, fun place. All right, let's welcome George McLean, our regular monthly guest right here on Sports Scene from the Marksman in Newport News. How are you, my friend? Doing well, Greg. How are you today? And as on cue, every time we talk, it seems like last time it was about Vegas shootings, and now it's uh, the New York tragedy yesterday, and you and I have talked about this before, that uh, crime can happen 24-7, whether it's by a gun or not. And that was a great point you had mentioned. This happened by a vehicle. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, it's, I don't know how you prevent uh, everything. Uh, obviously, we're hearing everything on the news, uh, different directions, you know, that this the woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, uh, syndrome. So they, they, they try to, you know, come up you know, w- with, with a fix. And there's certainly things that can be done to to minimize this. But I don't think there's anything that can be done to absolutely eliminate it. And uh, so that's why we as uh, private individuals, Need to be prepared uh, to defend ourselves. Uh, I mean, you you look and and see when the police arrive. It's it's an after uh, the event, you know. So the only one that's going to be able to to stop you know anything, regardless of what it is, if it's something in a vehicle and you see uh, you know a vehicle coming at you, you know. In, in, but in this case in New York, you know, it's not a gun friendly state. You have to have a you know, a, a, a permit to own a gun. And, you know, not everyone is going to be entitled, you know, to, to that, that that benefit. Here in Virginia, it's a whole different deal. deal. So, but that's not to say that that type of event can't happen here. It can. And if you see someone mowing down, just like in, in Charlottesville, uh, mowing down somebody, you know, coming at, at you, what are you going to do? Well, number one, you try to, you know, jump out of the way and get behind something, but you know, absent that, uh, you know, if it, if it comes down to that, I'd, I'd rather have that, that firearm and be glad I had than wishing I had one and I didn't, you know. Right. That's a great point because you had brought it up several times. It's not about the gun. It could have been a golf club. It could have been a tennis racket. Uh, this time it was a vehicle. Charlottesville, it was a vehicle. Uh, Las Vegas was, of course, uh guns and bump stocks and all that stuff but really it's about the criminal intent this coward premeditated it and he used a vehicle a heavy horsepower vehicle and like you said the police came after the fact they got him they shot him they wounded him but um you have to be vigilant at all time you can't prevent but so much well that's that's exactly right and even though the the police did arrive uh they did a great job they stopped the guy but not until after eight people died Mm-hmm. And so the question becomes: If you were one of those eight, or if one of those eight had a had a firearm, would they have uh, been able to, to stop him sooner before you know anyone else got killed? And I I, I don't know. I, I mean, if, if, if here's a a truck coming down a bike uh, path, and if you hear anything, and, and and this is the lesson to be learned from this: if if something doesn't seem right if you're hearing something or you're you're hearing a vehicle that's behind you where you should only be not hearing anything for instance yeah you've got the the highway out here and you hear vehicles on it but there's there's that 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 relevance you know if if i hear something out of my left ear it should be telling me that something over to my left and i may be expecting it but if i'm hearing something out of out of both and it sounds like it's behind me that's not 
where I should be hearing things. So it's being cognizant of your surroundings. And, you know, what we, we teach here in our, our, our classes, you know, be aware. You know, turn around and see what's what's going on. That's the only way that you're going to be able to defend yourself is, number one, you've got to first identify the threat and, and identify if, in fact, it is a threat. And if something is directly behind you that shouldn't be there, that starts opening up that possibility door. And you need to turn around and evaluate and look and see what's what's going on. You're exactly right, because um, it can happen anywhere. And let's face it, folks, let's not be naive. It's the holiday season now, the next two months. And banks get robbed, convenience stores, you hear about them every single day in the news, no matter what city. It could be any city and anywhere in the United States. But uh, vehicles, you have to be you know, proactive and look around and think before you almost walk out the door these days. You still can't have a bubble around you. But uh, like you said, if you hear something or see something, say something. Well, that's correct. And that bubble you talk about, you know, unfortunately, too many people live in that bubble, and they say, "Well, that that was in New York, or that was in Las Vegas, or that was in you know Tucson, or that was in Paris, or that was in London." You know, that stuff never happens to me. And then all of a sudden, one day, guess what? It's your turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, law of averages says, you know, sooner or later, something you know is going to happen, maybe closer. Uh, you know, the, the the point is, if if we're prepared. Uh, you minimize the chances of something happening to you. Hopefully, you never have to pull a gun out to defend your life. You know, but thank God, you know, we, we're we're able to have that that privilege. That should our number come up and and the bad folks are coming after us, that uh, you know I've got a way to defend myself. Hopefully, you have a way to defend uh, yourself. And you know, if if the firearm is is what I choose to do it then I want to make sure I'm legal, number one. I want to make sure I'm trained, uh, that I can uh, identify the target, <clears throat> and I can you know, take action to defend myself and my family. And that's what it boils down to. Right. The Marksman, folks, is at 520 Industrial Park Drive in Newport News. Give them a call at 872 872- 4130 learn about sales training indoor range as well even find out about their blog as well but there's something for everyone and unfortunately after incidents like this uh you know you got to be a little bit more proactive i mean face it george i mean york's had their antenna up since 9 11 16 years ago 16 plus years ago stuff still happens every day yeah yep you're you're exactly right so i mean it just makes the point that, that you can't uh Underemphasize this. This is a new world that, that we live in, and I'm not I'm not a fear monger. I'm not saying you know you need to be afraid because tomorrow you know someone's you know the likelihood of someone shooting you increases you know exponentially every time something like this happens. I don't want to go that route. I'm just simply saying that we 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 have a right to defend ourselves, and we should take action to prepare ourselves to do that. And hopefully we never have to do it. Uh, but it's it, the hindsight, you know, the twenty uh, or uh, Monday morning quarterback is always being twenty twenty. In hindsight, being twenty twenty, you know, we 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 don't want to say I wish I I, I should have done this. I I, I should have listened to you know that guy on the radio. I should have, you know, gone in and, and gotten some training. We don't want to we, we don't want to take that uh, that 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 after event attitude we 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 want to be proactive that's what we we preach and teach so you know get yourself to where you can defend yourself and instead of walking around in fear walking around that if it happens i'm 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 ready to do the best job i can that's no guarantee that you're still going to come out of the live but it sure equals the odds a whole lot better folks you can learn from the marksman great holiday gift for someone get them involved in the indoor shooting range uh, learn about guns, learn about the proper way to handle ammunition, cleaning your gun, military and law enforcement rates, of course, concealed weapons course right there at 520 Industrial Park Drive in Newport News, 872-4130, all powered by the Criminal Justice and Security Institute. And your staff is ready to train people uh, as soon as they walk in the door. Yeah, just to give us a shout. Uh, you know, if, if you're looking for uh, instruction, uh, you know, sometimes that gets you know, booked. Uh, a little heavily, so you may want to you know call and see who's available or when they're available. What you know, so you can set up a date and a time that works uh, you know for everyone. And while we're on with the military and you know law enforcement rates, we we have those, but we've instituted a couple of uh, you know new days 
uh, you know, uh, law enforcement uh, gets you know, uh, three days, uh, three range free days on the first and fifteenth of the month. But we've started military Mondays, to where on every Monday uh, the military gets an additional twenty percent off of their already discounted rate. We've got first responder Fridays, same thing. Uh, they get a discounted rate. It's a law enforcement rate, but we're going to you know give you another twenty percent discount. Uh, on on Friday, so you know, take advantage of that. You know, jump in. Glad to have you, you know, participating. Uh, you know, with us up here. Very good. Of course, the phone number is eight seven two forty one thirty. And of course, hunting season is here as well. And of course, you're the headquarters for for hunters. I know they always look to the marksman for getting it off started right. Yep, uh, come in and uh, you know, see us. Uh, talk to us about what your uh, you know, requirements are, and we'll get you get you set up. Very good. All right, George, all the best to you. Enjoy the beautiful weather, and um, we will talk to you in December. Hi, right, Greg. Sounds good. You stay safe. Thank you, my friend. Thank you as well. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. George McLean right there from the Marksman. You learn something every time you talk to that guy, Joe Daniel, always. He is so informative. I know. I, he's one of my favorite guests that you do have uh, just because he is so knowledgeable. He's fair. He's balanced. Um, he just knows a lot, and you can tell he's very passionate about what he does. Very good. Outback Steakhouse in Kemsville. Go by and see Mike and the staff. Spacious, nice dining area. Great bar, lunch and dinner daily, burgers, steaks, soup, salads. They also have great appetizers, seafood, pasta, chicken ribs, chops, all the best uh, desserts, beverages, dine-in, or carry-out. Right there at 1255 Fordham Drive in Virginia Beach. Give them a call at 523-4832. Go by and see Mike and the great staff. Lunch and dinner, seven days a week. Book your holiday parties at Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville. Great food, always fresh and cook the way you like it at Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville. All right, let's get to what teased me off. What tees you off? Presented by Hampton Roads Online Mall.com. And our good friends at Sakura Japanese Restaurant. Go by and see Jasmine, takeout and dine in, sushi bar. They deliver off of orderup.com, Walmart Way Crossing. Give her a call at 410-4577. Get some great Japanese food. And, of course, sushi at Sakura Japanese Restaurant in Chesapeake at 1437 Sam's Drive as well. Let's have a little fun right now here at uh, 1251 on Sports Scene. What teased me off, Joe Daniel? When you order something from the drive-thru and you're just trying to mind your own business, but you hear the cashier talking to their employees and you have to repeat yourself over and over again, all you want to do is get your food and leave. Yeah, <laughs> distracted drive through drivers, uh, drive through attendants. Yeah, that is pretty bad. You can kind of hear a secondary conversation going on in the background. All right, yesterday I went to get my eyes checked, and of course um, I had to repeat myself to this one receptionist 20 times. Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Get your hearing check, lady. Don't ask me over and over the same question when I'm 30 seconds away from you. Clog those ears, get them out. I mean, nothing annoying to hear. You say constantly. I can hear it once. Excuse me, but ten times? Yeah, yeah. I don't really like repeating myself too often. It re- just, I deal with my kids enough, and I have to repeat myself with my kids. I don't really want to have to maintain that same habit out in dealing with adults. Right. We all know that public has to have public bathrooms. Even grocery stores have them. Older people, kids, everybody's got to go sometime. But the lack of public bathrooms and public places to me is a no-no as well. Also accessible bathrooms. Yeah, there's a lot. When you go to outlet malls or strip malls or something, it's very. I don't think they have restrooms that are just openly available to the public, um, at least in, in the places that I've gone to. Um, it's difficult to find a restroom. And, it's, and uh, also something that I do, if you do go to a, a restaurant or um, a restroom in a public area, I always try to make sure to pay, even if it's just like a small soda, always pay at something don't just walk in use the restroom and walk out at least i don't i think that you should at least say i used your restroom here's the dollar for a small soda a tea or something thank you a convenience fee or something just i don't know for me it's just manners and being respectful you're exactly right because i do it as well but people do it in hotels too i mean any possible place you you never know where you're gonna be stuck at in the middle of nowhere especially as a holiday season we got to travel so much right. how about this the the whole thing about entitlement People that say a smart aleck comment to you real close to your face 
and they walk away and hide. And, and, they can't, and, they're, and they're like, excuse me? And they're like, gone already. I hate it when they say it as they're walking away. Oh, That's yes. That's the worst. They're just like mumbling it to themselves as they walk away. And you're like, really? You can't even say it to my face? Yeah, I saw that last Sunday firsthand. How about this? Walking in the rain or bad weather in the dark, looking for your car, getting soaking wet for 30 minutes. Oh, Luckily, you got to change your clothes. Yes, it happened to yours truly. For 30 minutes. For 30 Greg. minutes. And then, of course, you know, remember, don't forget, fall back with the clock now. That's going to yeah. be more of an issue, too, especially when people go out shopping. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, you don't even have to remember anymore just because everybody uses their cell phone, so it happens automatically. So that's a that's a bonus, at least, I guess. You, but, and, um, yeah, you're exactly right. You know, people use their cell phones for everything, even, even opening their cars up, it seems like, now, too. All right, what else teased me off, of course? Uh, I heard a guy this morning on the radio saying he gets constantly annoyed during Halloween on Trick or Treat when he hears stuff like this. Trick or Treat. I think we get the point. That is annoying. I'm sure everybody felt like that last night. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fortunately, we go out, so we don't trick or treat. We go to uh, little like Christian parking lots, church parking lots, and do their for, their form of trick or treating and Christ, uh, Halloween. Uh, so we didn't have to experience all that. It's always fun though to see the people out trick or treating as well. Hey, some people get involved in it, some people don't. They yeah. don't be bothered. No, I want to. I definitely do want to have my uh, kids involved with that some years. But we have uh, we heard about this really great event, and it was it was awesome. Um, but we didn't do the trick or treating. But it was great seeing all these families go out dressed up in costumes and making a family theme with each other. It was very sweet, very heartwarming to see these families being together. Yes. What else teased me off? Plus, you can go to the neighbors or churches or the malls. That might be a little bit safer. But what's really hurt trick or treat is the Dollar Tree. Candy is so cheap year yeah. round. You can get there all the name brand candy you want at a discounted price. That's taking away the the day to day minutia of Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can just put out a giant, huge bowl or multiple bowls of all this candy, and it doesn't even cost you but five dollars to do that. I set up five dollars for a bat, just one bag. What else teased me off? 27 years been broadcasting football at Todd Stadium. Get a bathroom in the press box. Get an elevator. Your facility is a dump. I'm going to say it again. Todd Stadium is a dump in Newport News. Worst broadcast facility in the history of Hampton Roads as well. What else teased me off? Just, you know, in, in general, being late. People that are late. Yeah, yeah. Well, late, but also super early for me. I don't like it when people are super early. I disagree with this whole notion of if you're early, you're on time. I disagree with that. If I tell you to be somewhere at 3 o'clock, meet me at 3 o'clock, and then you show up at 2.30, 2.45, I'm not ready for you at 2.45, and I don't know. It's just if I tell you at 3, I want you to be there at 3, 2.59 at the earliest. <laughs> um, but that's the time that I said I'm ready for you. Let's meet at that time. I don't disagree. I don't agree with that. If you're early, then you're on time. Right. Especially for a contractor that you really don't want to see anyway that comes to your house. Also, the solicitations by friends, kids that want you to subscribe to a magazine. I don't like magazines anymore. Rarely do I read them. In the phone and the computer have killed print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. And we uh, had an article come out. And in the newspaper, and I'm not sure how exactly they saw it, but I think it was probably online that they saw it. But you're right. Everything is online. You can get some of the from all over um, the world, all over the country. There's a lot of uh, British uh, newspapers that I prefer reading over uh, on certain topics than I do American journalism. Um, it just depends on what you like. So, yeah, you're, you, the Internet has given you access and different perspectives so much it's just wider and bigger, um, but it, it also has this idea of the world is so much smaller now, too, because you're able to tap into and reach into different cultures at a click of a button. But don't use your kid or family members to solicit magazines by the mail. That's a snail mail, especially. All right, final um, nice uh, business here, Panera. All items 100% clean. They deliver catering. Take advantage of the rapid pickup option. They got great soups, sandwiches, salads, bagels, bread, yum bread, smoothies, breakfast sandwiches, of course, cookies, desserts, great for the holidays, refreshing beverages. Go by and see Brian and the wonderful staff that will take good care of you. Fast, expedited orders on the rapid pickup option, like I mentioned, PaneraBread.com, food as it should be. 
They are located right there in Harborview at 6255 College Drive in Suffolk, Virginia. Give them a call at uh, 483-3670. For more, go to Panera bread.com food as it should be great show today I want to thank wayne randazzo from the mets broadcast booth as well as george mclean always be safe may the memory of tim parsons be eternal excellent broadcaster over at wlqm radio as well and of course good luck to all the teams somebody asked me about the admirals we've interviewed them on sports highlights we've done segments with them here for several years their attendance is struggling. People are not showing up. I got to wonder about the future of the Norfolk Admirals. Will they be here next year? I don't know. I really don't know. And I don't think the public really cares anymore about the Norfolk Admirals. Hate to say it, but that's the truth. All right. For Joe Daniel, I'm Greg Bickavaris. Happy Wednesday. Don't forget, at Greg Bick on Twitter, G-R-E-G-B-I-C. Go to GJBTV.com. Hit the YouTube link for archive shows. Happy Wednesday. We'll talk to you soon. AM 1650 WHKT Portsmouth 92.5 FM W223CT Norfolk. For your daily supply of news and talk, we are the answer.